When you turn 65 and enroll in Medicare, you'll likely be presented with many different Medicare options. It's entirely possible that your inbox and your mailbox may become flooded with emails and mailers related to Medicare. Now, if you choose to use a broker, then you'll have an expert to guide you in enrolling and purchasing the best possible plan for your needs. But in preparing for that first phone call, it's important that you not only gather the necessary paperwork and important information, but that you be prepared with a series of questions to ask to really own that Medicare conversation. Now before we dive into today's video, I want to ask that you please click that like button, give us a thumbs up, and of course make sure to subscribe to stay up to date. And if you have any questions whatsoever about Medicare or health insurance in general, you can of course reach us in the comments or give us a call at the number on the screen. Now remember, a broker works for you, not the insurance carrier. They're there to guide you in your health insurance or Medicare journey, and many do so at absolutely no charge. The first question you should ask your broker is whether you should choose a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medigap plan, also known as a Medicare Supplement plan. Original Medicare provides truly comprehensive and really excellent coverage, but there are definitely some gaps. Namely, there are deductibles and co-pays and co-insurance that you'll have to meet, and there is no out-of-pocket maximum. That means that should you have major medical needs, you could incur major medical debt. And that's why many people look to a Medigap plan, which is again also known as a Medicare supplement plan. Now for these types of plans, you will pay an additional monthly premium, but they will eliminate or drastically reduce your deductible and your co-pays and co-insurance. And of course, they will also impose that out-of-pocket maximum. You can think of them like an all-inclusive approach to healthcare. Medicare Advantage plans replace original Medicare entirely. You'll still have access to at least the same benefits as original Medicare, and very often Medicare Advantage plans will offer additional benefits. Very often you will also have lower co-pays or deductibles, and of course they will impose that out-of-pocket maximum. However, you will no longer be able to see any doctor who accepts Medicare. You'll have to work within network, and this can be very, very limiting. Your broker will discuss with you your financial and health concerns to guide you towards the most appropriate option. They'll also take into consideration your geographical location, because in some areas of the country, Medicare Advantage plans are better than others. In some areas of the country, it can be very hard to find a doctor or a hospital who accepts your plan. So your geographical location is again, very, very important in making this decision. You may also want to ask your broker if you're eligible for any Medicare savings programs. Now, many people are surprised to find that they actually do have to pay for Medicare. And yes, there is a monthly premium for Medicare Part B, although most people don't have to pay for Medicare Part A. There are four Medicare savings programs. There is the QMB, the SLMB, the QI, and the QDWI. Don't worry, we'll go over those in just a minute. The QMB is the Qualified Medicare Beneficiary Program, and there are income and asset limits. For an individual, the monthly income limit is $1,153. For a married couple, the monthly income limit is $1,546. For an individual, the asset limit is $8,400. And for a married couple, the asset limit is $12,600. This is for 2022. These limits do tend to increase yearly. If you're eligible for this program, you'll receive assistance in paying for Medicare Part A and Medicare Part B and Medicare providers won't be able to bill you for deductibles or co-pays or co-insurance or anything like that. And you will also be automatically enrolled in the Extra Help Program, which is a discount program through Medicare Part D. Like the QMB program, the SLMB program also has income and asset criteria. The SLMB program is the Specified Low Income Medicare Beneficiary Program, and there are income and asset limits. So for an individual, the monthly limit is $13.79, and for a married couple, it's $1,851. For an individual, the asset limit is $8,400. And for a married couple, it's $12,600. You may have noticed that the asset and income criteria are a little bit less stringent. And as a result, this program only helps to pay for Medicare Part B premiums, but you will still automatically be enrolled in the extra help program. Then there's the QI program, which is the Qualified Individual Program. Again, this one is a little bit different. The asset and income criteria are different, but you do have to apply on a yearly basis, 
and acceptance is based on a first come first serve basis. However, when you are reapplying or re-enrolling, those people are taken into consideration first on the first come first serve list. The QI program cannot be used in conjunction with Medicaid benefits, and it will only help to pay for Medicare Part B. However, you will still automatically be enrolled in the extra help program. Finally, there's the QDWI program, which is the Qualified and this Disabled program will Working only help Individual to pay program. for Medicare Part A. And most people actually don't pay a premium for Medicare Part A. However, you may want to look into this program if you are a working disabled person under 65, you lost your premium free Part A when you went back to work, or you aren't getting medical assistance from your state. Like the other Medicare savings programs, there are income and asset criteria. So for the Qualified Disabled Working Individual, the monthly income limit for an individual is $46.15, for a married couple it's $61.89, and the asset limit for an individual is $4,000, and for a married you are couple continuing it's to work, $6,000. Once you hit those 40 quarters, you will no longer have to pay a premium for Medicare Part A. These limits are higher in Alaska and Hawaii, and even if you don't exactly meet these criteria, you may want to go ahead and apply anyway. And remember that the limits do tend to increase year after year. You'll also want to ask your broker about any special needs plans that you may be eligible for, namely DSNPs and CSNPs. So DSNPs are dual eligibility special needs plans. These are for people who are eligible for Medicare and Medicaid. You'll have access to the full range of benefits offered by Medicare and Medicaid, in addition to several other benefits. These are a type of Medicare Advantage plan, and they can definitely offer a major cost savings with many additional benefits thrown in. Then there is CSNPs, which are chronic illness special needs plans. These are another type of Medicare Advantage plan, which is tailored to meet the needs of certain chronic illnesses. You can find this full list on medicare.gov. I'll put the link in the description below. And here are the 15 approved conditions. So there is alcohol and drug dependence, various autoimmune disorders, cancer, cardiovascular disorders, chronic heart failure, dementia, diabetes, end-stage liver disease and end-stage renal disease, severe hematologic disorders. There's also HIV AIDS, several chronic lung disorders, chronic and disabling mental health conditions, neurologic disorders, and stroke. The list of conditions is quite long and pretty extensive, so you definitely want to discuss these certain health concerns with your broker. If you choose to go the Medicare Advantage route, there are several things you'll want to discuss with your broker. Namely, you'll want to talk about the doctors and hospitals that are in network. Medicare Advantage works more like traditional health insurance that you may have had in the past, so you'll need to stay in network to receive maximum coverage. So if you have doctors that you wish to visit or hospitals that you may need to utilize, you wanna make sure that these doctors and hospitals accept your plan. Now this does not apply if you go with a Medicare supplement plan because regardless of who your carrier is, when you choose a Medicare supplement plan, you're really still only beholden to the rules of original Medicare. So if your doctor or hospital accepts original Medicare, they accept your supplement plan and almost all do. And if you're looking at any type of prescription drug coverage with a Medicare Advantage plan or even Medicare Part D, you want to talk about that with your broker as well so at least you can get an idea of what the costs might be. Finally, when discussing your plan with your broker, make sure to ask about their familiarity with that carrier. Some carriers have a better reputation for customer service and others have a reputation for being a little bit more difficult to deal with. And many brokers will actually assist you with any type of customer service issues that you may have down the line on a plan in which they help you enroll. So make sure to bear that in mind. And finally, as part of doing your due diligence regarding the carrier, make sure to ask your broker about their history of price increases. Now yes, prices do tend to increase on a yearly basis to account for rising healthcare costs and inflation. However, you want to make sure that your carrier has a history of low and stable increases. That's definitely something to take into consideration. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to give us a call at the number on the screen. And of course, you can always reach us in the comments below. We are more than happy to answer any of your questions. And please don't forget, click that like button, give us a thumbs up so we can get this info out there. And do make sure to subscribe, that way you stay up to date. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.